So for me, the remit is about having another point of view. I think up until fairly recently, history has been his story, which has been um, a particular narrative from a white male middle-class perspective. So there hasn't been engagement from another voice. And so what drew me to this project was that invitation to have another point of view. And long may it continue. <laughs> I'm Charmaine Watkiss and I'm an artist who works primarily with drawing. I draw myself, but they're not self-portraits. I create characters and map narratives onto them. I collect a lot of research from archives around the African and Caribbean diaspora and experience. Uh, I take reference images of myself. Uh, so there's this performative aspect of my work. And so once I've gridded up the drawing, um, it's no longer me. I just see the work as a character. So at the moment, I'm working on a small commission for the British Museum, and it's in response to the Sloan collection of botanical drawings. My name is Alicia Hughes, and I work with the collections of Sir Hans Sloan, uh, which are one of the founding collections for the British Museum. The material that Charmaine is responding to is botanical drawings within the collection of Sir Hans Sloan and his, also his printed book, The Natural History of Jamaica, which was published in 1707 and 1725. Hans Sloan was a collector, a naturalist and a physician and he is a very complex individual um, who had many different roles in society. He was president of the Royal College of Physicians. He was also president of the Royal Society. And he had significant ties to the transatlantic trade in enslaved people. The commission responds to Sloan, to his time in Jamaica, but it's not about Sloan himself. Charmaine's work is much bigger and Sloan is just a small part of this story. This drawing, I think for me, speaks about indigenous knowledge and it speaks about a knowledge share between the native peoples of the Caribbean, but also the enslaved Africans. It speaks about knowledge that is centuries old, long before Westerners even knew that these plants existed. I actually started this drawing in Jamaica. I was in Jamaica over Christmas, spending time with my family and thinking about the commission. I decided to make a work about the aloe plant. Sloan mentions it a lot. It is a plant that's seen as a cure-all. Uh, it's called single Bible in Jamaica because it's seen as the Bible for the body. So my warrior woman is um, an aloe plant, but she's also telling um, a story about plant material that was brought over to the Caribbean with the enslaved. So within that, the knowledge of the healing properties of these plants also traveled. That's, be that's beautiful, that actually. He, he, he got people to do stuff, all these drawings and stuff. So the drawings were predominantly by Reverend Garrett Moore. Mm. And One of the main reasons that Sloan went to Jamaica was in search of new botanical knowledge, which could be useful and profitable. And he also engaged directly and deliberately with enslaved people from Africa and local healers who often had a lot more knowledge about the botanical um, substances and the plants that, from the island that could be used in the practice of medicine. So in the back of the boat, we have um, the ricinus plant, which is also known as the castor plant. The seed of this plant is highly toxic. It's where the poison ricin comes from. And it's so toxic that something the size of a pinhead could kill someone. 
but this plant, it also has healing properties. And so it's been used um, as a skin balm and it's used um, to beautify the hair and also used for um, any kind of upset stomach um, complaints. And there's a passage where Sloan writes about this uh, because Ateno had knowledge um, of this plant as well. The Taino are the original inhabitants of the Caribbean. And then in the front of the boat is uh, the cocoa plant. And I put that as a kind of a, a wry comment because um, Sloan is somehow credited for inventing hot chocolate drink, which isn't necessarily the case, but I just wanted to make a comment about it. The natural and botanical knowledge is obviously the, the main purpose of the volumes, mm. but throughout it, Sloan is recording what he sees around him. So the cultural history as well, in a sense, mm. his interactions with people and indeed his participation within the local society, within the local economy and so on as well. Mm. The instances where he is um, interacting with enslaved people who are gathering knowledge on his behalf mm. um, that is then eventually produced within his book. We have to reconcile what we know with, about Sloan um, and any achievements for the advancement of science mm. with this what is inherently a violent process of knowledge production mm. um, at the time. Yeah. It's interesting because it, the whole thing is, it's very entangled because on the one side, you know, he obviously had his, his interests in the slave trade because of his wife. Um, and he relied on um, enslaved people's knowledge and for them to gather material for him. And yet we have these volumes that details a lot of information that's interesting to us today, you know, hundreds of years later. And how do you kind of reconcile that, you know what I mean? Because the, the way he, he gained the information, I don't know. I know the whole thing is kind of, you know, doesn't sit well with me at all. Yeah. You know, here I am reading his book um, but, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. It's really important for us as a museum to recognise the colonial legacies of our collections and to talk openly about them. That Charmaine's drawing that this commission will go into the British Museum collection I think is a really positive development and a way of developing our collection to, to think about the, the histories um, of our foundation, of our collection. Historically, these stories may not have been told, but they're an important part of our shared history. There's an interesting instance in the book in which Sloan records an animal bite to his foot. Um, some sort of insect bite, which essentially gets infected and is extremely painful. Sloan, being unable to treat this himself, seeks the assistance of a local black healer who um, advises him on how to treat it, who tells him the name of the insect um, and treats it for him. Sloan describes this black healer as a healer who used to be a queen in her own country. This instant is significant because it is very unusual within the book, but it also demonstrates the way in which Sloan was uh, benefiting both well, physically and also intellectually from the knowledge of enslaved African people in Jamaica. I am inspired by the African Queen Mother as an archetype, and these are women who hold very important positions in um, society and within local government, you know, even today. And uh, I've looked at a lot of uh, images of these women, so that kind of regal pose 
um, in a way is connected to this, but I, it wasn't my intention. But it's also a pose that I see as being colonial. So in a lot of um, old paintings, if you go into National Gallery, you see this very formal, regal way of posing. But at the same time, if I think of old photographs of my parents' generation or beforehand, they have that same kind of regal pose. So it is a, a kind of a colonial, I see it as a colonial um, kind of trope. But it's also very dignified too. And it is this very kind of steely inner strength. It's as if the poser is kind of tapping into that, that inner strength. Because if you think of how people of color globally you know, through colonialism, have had to kind of endure a lot of discrimination, a lot of hardship. Um, you know, throughout all of that, they still managed to hold their own, you know, with dignity. And so I think for me to reference that in my drawing is, is important. It's an important statement. This is the Leghetto plant on the scroll. The Leghetto is a tree and its bark, the bark of the tree is very fibrous on the inside. And so when you pull it out, um, it actually looks like lace. So it's all actually called lace bark as well. And enslaved women use this um, to make clothing with. But more importantly, um, her holding this scroll with the, the Leghetto plant, I'm referencing a portrait that was painted of Han Sloan, also holding a scroll with the Leghetto plant. Within the portrait of Sloan, which was made in 1736, he is conveying an image of himself that is the successful physician, and he is holding uh, an illustration of the lace bark tree, signaling his um, knowledge of natural history and his mastery over nature, in a sense. And this image has come down to us. This is the image that has um, been conveyed through us and has influenced what we understand and what we know about Sloan and how we think about him. Um, but it's important to understand that it's a constructed image. It is not the full story. When I look at the Sloan painting and see him kind of in possession of this, this drawing. It's, for me, it speaks of him going out and just, you know, acquiring as much stuff as he could. And my plant warrior holding this same scroll, she's taking that back. She's saying, well, actually, you know, this, this belongs to me. This is, this is about me and my heritage. She's carrying a lot. I mean, she's literally carrying, but I think metaphorically she's carrying a lot. I think for her to carry that weight of knowledge and to present it to the world um, is a big deal. And I think that she is uh, a keeper of the knowledge and um, she is just presenting to you what she knows and that is it. What you do with it is up to you.